Okay. Okay. So Savando was asking, how much a new HPLC would cost? And my answer is, um, 2005 525i um, with 35,000 miles, and they are about the same. Personally, I take the Beamer, but hey, what can we do? <laughs> we need to do some chemistry. All right. So. We went through normal phase, right? Normal phase separations. Got polar analytes, non-polar mobile phase. We got our sugars, we got our lactones. And the weak solvent was hexane, the strong solvent was methanol, right? Cool. All right. So now, for the dirty little secret, nobody does normal phase. It sucks. Basically, it's inefficient. What does inefficient mean in chromatography? means peaks are broad. So uh, you want sharp peaks, you have to do what's called reverse phase. Normal phase is normal because it came first. <coughs> reverse phase is reverse because it came second, and it has the reverse polarity. Reverse phase, oddly though, is based on the same silica particles. However, the silica particles are coated with a molecular layer, yes, a monomolecular layer of octadecane. Octadecane is 18 carbons and um, a bunch of hydrogen. It's aliphatic. And it is coupled to the surface, which I described earlier as having silicon and oxygen, by a silyl ether bond, which is SiOC. So silicon, oxygen, carbon. Oh, you can't hear. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought I was like. So, I'm going to have to edit this thing, okay? I have to edit it. Keep Should we going. start over? No, no, no. Oh. It's okay. So, wait. Oh, we're waiting for something? No, I'm just contemplating the question. <laughs> I have to edit the damn thing now. Oh, okay. That's okay. We'll keep going. All right. So, reverse phase is better. Except it doesn't work that well for super polar. But it's mostly preferred because it's way more efficient. What is reverse phase? Same silica particles, now coated with octadecane. Octadecane, 18 carbon hydrocarbon chain coupled to the surface through a silicon oxygen carbon bond. Cool chemistry. Um, and what you get in that case then is instead of a polar surface, you get a very non-polar surface. An oil surface that is 18 carbons is about 1.8 nanometers thick. 18 angstroms thick, big enough for a molecule to kind of sh stick in there. Hide, right? Now, so now we've completely inverted the, uh, the situation. The stationary phase is very non -polar. And in, in reverse phase, the typical mobile phase are what we have here, which are water, methanol, and acetonitrile. So now, um, let's use the example of the lactone because the sugar won't work in. Sugar is not going to work on a reverse phase column, it's too cold. I'll explain why. Let's now take the lactone and an even more hydrophobic uh, molecule. Let's say, um, you know, um, ethylphenyl ether. Some kind of ether with uh, non polar cabbage on either side. Okay? So now in that case, they're both, dissolve them both in, in, in say, water. Sparingly soluble, but soluble. Inject them under the column. They're solvated, albeit poorly, by the water. They go to the column. They interact with the column surface. The opportunity arises for partitioning. Now, you want to do the ether or the lactone? Can be the lactone? So would you like to be the ether? Cool, thank you. Thanks. So. so now, we've got the lactone versus the ether. So the lactone now has a carbonyl in it, even though it's like that. And then the ether has just that ether of carbon, which doesn't produce much polarity. Okay? We're both solvated in water. We're both bumping into a hydrophobic phase. Now, which of you two are better solvated? The lactone or the ether? Either you're the lactone. So uh, 
car branch and like, what about me? It's like, because I wouldn't be doing that. Right. <laughs> so cool. So the lactone spider solvate has more oxygens, right? More polar kind of bonds in it. And then the ether is has just, you know, it's O C O C, right, which has some polarity, but ether is very low. So now, if you want to interact with the stationary phase, two things have to happen. You desolvate from the water and then resolvate in the octadecal phase. Okay. So now, um, to desolvate you is going to take more energy than desolvating the more pollen molecule takes more energy. Okay. So that means that the, the, the partitioning is going to be less favorable for the uh, more polar molecule. So, the more polar molecule remains, on average, longer in the mobile phase of the station. So, who's going to come out of the column first? The lactone or the E? So the answer is A, lactone, or B, E. The question is, who comes out first? Um, me. Ether? No. So the answer is... A, lactone. Nice job, thank you. A, lactone, because lactone is better solvent, it remains in the mobile phase more, it comes out first. So now, the rules are reversed from last time. Okay, so now we're setting up the scenario, right? You're in a mixture, you both go in at the same time. The, the lactone is a little better solvent in the water. <coughs> the ether is a little bit better solvent, let's say, in the stationary phase. So the ether is retained. Lactone is retained less, so it comes out first, detected. Now, the problem with the ether is that its solubility in water is so poor that its retention is going to be very long. So what do we do? Same trick we same trick we did in the last case. Put it in different solvent. Exactly. Exactly. Now we're going to introduce a different solvent. That solvent is going to be, now we're starting in water, we're going to modify that solvent to better solvate the nonpolar entities. And what, what shall we choose? Well, we could use hexane, but unfortunately it's not miscible with water, so that's not good. So instead, we go to an intermediate polarity solvent such as methanol or acetonitrile. Methanol then is a better solvent for the ether than water. And there she is. Ether partitions out of the hydrocarbon phase on the surface into now this methanol water mixture. It's better, it dilutes quicker, it's detected. So now, water and methanol in reverse phase, which is the strong solvent and which is the weak solvent? Okay, we started with water, we diluted <coughs> the lactone, but not the ether. So, is it strong or weak? Excellent, it's weak. Now, methanol would have solvated both of them now. Well. Well, we start with water, we start with the weak, and we we'll go to the strong. Does that make sense? It's the same trick that we had in the normal phase case, where we started with the weak solvent, which was hexane, and we went to the strong solvent, which was methanol. Cool. Weak to strong. Now, reverse phase. Weak is water. Normal phase, weak is hexane. Reverse phase. Strong is methanol. Normal phase. Strong is methanol. So it's a trick. But methanol is a strong solvent in both cases. So it's kind of it's coming at the problem from two directions. From water to methanol is highly polar to moderate. From hexane to methanol is moderate, mo highly nonpolar to moderate. Right? In both cases, the moderately polar one is the better solvent. It's a stronger solvent. <coughs> it's the one that you introduce later in the elution. So you you start with a weak solvent. You separate. They have time to separate. To a stronger solvent. Okay. All right. So now.
now you know pretty much all you need to know about the fundamentals. The rest is trickery. You can play with pH, you can play with the acetonitrile versus methanol. Now, essentially it's all empirical stuff. Acetonitrile is very polar but has no hydrogen bonds. Right? It's um, CH3CN, right? Excellent. Um, so it will differentially solvate things relative to methanol. I mean, it's, it's, at that point, it's, it's essentially, essentially phenomenology. If you can't separate two analytes of similar polarity, you can change between hydrogen bonding and non-hydrogen bonding modifier between uh, methanol and acetonitrile, for example. Making sense so far? Cool. Excellent. All right. So, um, let's see if there's any more interesting questions you can ask about. All right, let's do just another quick elution order prediction. Reverse phase. Two analytes, benzene and benzoic acid. Which eludes first? Benzoic acid. Benzoic acid, excellent, because it's polar. Exactly. Reverse phase, stationary phase is non -polar. Okay, cool. That's one of the test questions. And you have that pre preview. Thank you. Ha! I love it. Benzene and benzoic acid. Reverse phase. Which eludes first? Answer was benzoic acid. Perfect. Because it's more polar. In reverse phase, the polar eludes first. The non-polar. The non-polar eludes first. Perfect. Yeah. It's all this thing like, if the stationary phase is polar, it retains the polar. If the stationary phase is non-polar, it retains the non-polar. <coughs> and most separation is done on reverse phase because the interactions are more facile, they're faster, kinetically faster. Therefore, the plug of analyte spreads less during its transit through the column. The dispersion and retention times from molecule to molecule can cause what's called a band broadening. And that dispersion is worse for non-polar or for normal phase. Polar phases. So that's the big story. Um, so now you can approach a separation problem just looking at polarity. If you want to separate a, say you make a molecule and you want to see if it's pure, you can look up its polarity by typing in the molecular formula. There's web-based programs. There's calculators for what's called log p. It's so important in separation in you know pharmaceuticals and other settings that you can give a structure to a website and it will calculate the predicted uh, polarity in a chromatographic setting. It's called log p. The larger the log p, the more polar and the, um, you know, the faster it really is. Cool. So there's, I think, enough on the basics of uh, the separation for now. And so we'll, we'll cut this unit.